Timothy was someone who was spreading the word of God with Paul. Pauly boy, St. Paul, once was Saul, now is Paul. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer and I'm not wearing a hat today. I am Sailor Moon. Why couldn't you be? I told you before the show, you should be uh, the girl with the pearl earring. I am the girl with the pearl earring. With your little head scarf. And this here is Frank. He's mas- masked up because um, he's worried about the Delta strain. Now, I have a question for you. Let's get controversial from the beginning on a Thursday. Yeah. New York. New York, New York. City so nice, they had to name it twice. The city so nice, they named it twice. <laughs> Came out with a mandate, or at least like a proposal for something that, going forward, public places such as bars and restaurants are going to require proof of vaccination. People are getting pretty mad about it. They're saying this is this this is not good. This is a military state. How do you feel? I feel that I was mm. vaccinated and I don't know where my papers are. <laughs> I'm just saying. So the, then, what do you do? The I, I mean, you could, you could get it. The idea okay. of I'm for it. I'm for it. I understand individual freedom. I understand um, the rights of of the whole world, but especially the United States is what we're what, what we're founded on. Mm. But this is a this is a national health threat. Yeah. Okay. So the greater good, the, the, it's beyond individual. So your individual choice will then to be not to go to the place that wants to see your papers, but leaving it up to everyone is not working. I am vaccinated. And so that was my choice, but I still wear masks. And the reason I'm wearing a mask is number one, because um, I want to help to not spread. Yeah. I, I know that I'm protected, but I also know that I'm a carrier. Okay. So the other thing is I might not go to the, I'm vaccinated. I might not go to the hospital for COVID, but if I go to the hospital for a car accident, I want a bed. Mm. So the people who are not vaccinated, I don't want them to take up my bed. So I don't want them to get it. Yeah. Yeah. Here's my thing, guys. I would never push vaccines on anybody. I wouldn't. That's not, that's not who I am. With that being said, I think people are getting a little too high and mighty on what is their right and what is their privilege. And to go into private establishments unvaccinated is a a privilege to be able to go places. Like people get so mad, like, you're not going to let me in. It's like, this is is like, people see it as, um, oh, I should be allowed to go into Walmart. And it's like. Walmart is just a, a giant corporation that might as well be a mom and pop store that can turn anyone away. Right. You couldn't get in to a club in a t-shirt the other day. I couldn't get to a, I couldn't get into a club in a t-shirt. And, and so I was you got a, one that had words on it and then you were allowed in. Yeah. The white t-shirt, no go. I'm probably in a gang. White t-shirt with, that says, you know. Anything. Ocean City, Maryland. I'm good to go. But um, my, my, what I don't understand is if we, if I didn't get my booster shot as a kid. I wasn't allowed to go to public school. Right. It was it was a requirement. And they were like on us. Like, hey, you need to get your boosters. Why? Because we can't have an unbooster kid getting the other kid sick. Right. You don't have to get your boost. If, if you were raising your child and said, I'm not going to get their boosters, that's your choice. Right. I will never tell. I, I, if they say we're going to go door to door vaccinating people, I'd be like, well, that's a little much. But by choosing not to get your boosters, you're choosing I'm going to have to homeschool my child. Right. By choosing not to get the COVID vaccine, don't get the COVID vaccine. But then you lose the privilege of going into private establishments and infecting people that were on the side of I'm gonna I'm gonna worry about it. Right. And so I think people want their cake and they want to eat it too. They do. So they want to have the freedom of choice. So yeah, it's it's really they're yeah, you know, it's the cake and eat it too. They have the freedom of choice to not get vaccinated and will yes. force you to get vaccinated. But then they're mad that establishments are able to turn you away. Like right. you, either con- we have to control. If if you're into control, control will be telling places you have to let them in. It's like no, we don't. We're private. And so, my biggest thing is, if you don't want to be vaccinated, that's your choice. But we're all in cahoots, and it's not on a national level. We can't say what happened to the U.S. This is a global pandemic, and. If you want to make the choice, again, I'm not vaccinated, you also have to go through the steps to 
understand that you might say taking the vaccine's a risk. I might say not taking the vaccine's a risk. So then we sort of need to come into an agreement that, okay, I'll get the vaccine that allows me to socialize. Then that's my risk. You're not getting the vaccine. Now you have to stay away from people to not. That's enough of that, though. Um, <clears throat> let us know down in the comments what you think. Maybe you're like, we live in a fascist state and this is the beginning of the end of the I new, world, new world order. To encourage people to um, to take it seriously because, like I said, take the um, the COVID virus out of the picture. I, I want the I want the doctors available. I want the beds available. So think of it bigger than the vaccine, the COVID, the the respiratory uh, ventilator. Think of it as you're taking up lim- limited space that's in a good, hospitals. That's, that's a good point. You know what? Because like the vaccinated and the unvaccinated, I think the one person I would disagree with is someone who says COVID is not that big of a deal. Mm-hmm. COVID is not taking countless lives. So therefore i respect any avenue you go once you respect that if the avenue you go is well i don't trust the vaccine either right okay well then to still take covid seriously and not trust the vaccine you don't want to be in in crowds where it can spread right if you take covid seriously and you say i trust the vaccine Mm -hmm. you get the vaccine then it's like you feel more comfortable going out Mm -hmm. but to not get the vaccine and still feel like you want to be in large super spreading crowds right that means that you're not taking what's happening with COVID. Seriously. Yeah, and look, just please look beyond COVID and look at every single thing you need done at a doctor, or, yeah. and and things that you you don't know that you need done yet because it's going to be a surprise. Yeah, uh, it's it's taking up too much space. It's taking up more space now than it did last year in yeah. the hospitals. Yeah, but it might sound like I have COVID right now, but I fell asleep with the fan on yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I love falling asleep with the fan on, but I always wake up feeling like I have hay fever. Yeah. Maybe I have we Delta. We still have our... Someone said they never even knew we had a, 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 a you divider never, here. You never knew we had a divider? We have a divider. Um, yeah. Um, what's up, guys? It is Thursday. And as you know, as we told you last week, something special about Thursday. Are you going to solve it? So last week, you um, you didn't challenge me. You bullied me. Yeah. And, and you said that I, I said I could never do this since it came out in the 80s or um, how to be the 80s, right? Yeah. Um, I hated it. And I, I've been known to smash these onto the ground in my driveway <laughs> and uh, break them open. And you said, no, you can do it. I couldn't do it. You know what? I'm going to propose something. I couldn't do it. I'm going to propose something on this podcast. Next Thursday? I'll never. Right, don't you Thursday, bring it out, please. I don't ever want to see one. You are going to solve it. No, I won't. Mm-hmm. Um, and so here we are. <laughs> do you have the other one ready so that I could just... <laughs> yeah, so, that would have been a good idea. <laughs> I know. It would have been. If okay. You, if you could do um, maybe magic of editing. Well, you can't do it yet, but no. have you? do you feel more confident that you will be able to get it? Okay, so... Truth be told, as a true great procrastinator that I am, it, this happened last Thursday. Only this morning, this Thursday, did I pull up a YouTube um, tutorial to, to say, I wonder if I could do it. So, obviously, I spent five minutes. But within those five minutes, I did learn some... You learned there's a method to the madness. I learned the that there's you. a method. And it's not a insider trick. It's not a magician. It's literally how this equation. thing was made yeah. yeah so i do have more hope than i did last thursday hey you know what we may not have solved it this thursday but we have the next best thing that's hope yeah so maybe next thursday right ding but guys you know what else thursday is it's the special time of the week because it's walk through thursday oh wait oh we haven't we haven't rolled the intro yet Roll the intro. Uh. Welcome back. Hope you're having fun. Cuz walk through Wednesday just begun. What's up, guys? It is walk through Thursday. You know what we do here. Do I have to explain it? I don't know. I'm going to. New people. We're going to open up the Bible. It's a spiritual podcast, so we're going to open up the Bible. Open I wish I app. knew, like, uh, what is it called? Like the himaly when, with, with the priest saying when the Bible's opened. Oh. First of all, it's the homily, not the himaly. Himaly, homily. But I like that because the hymn 
Like H yeah. H Y M N. Yeah, that's um, what we do. We do a little homily over here. The homily is not even a song. The homily is he reads the gospel, and then the homily is him explaining it to us. Yeah. So we basically all we do here is homily. This is homily. <laughs> We're just homilying around. Um. So we Bible slow open. I forgot. So we open up the Bible and we pick a Bible verse or story or piece, Section. and we break it down. We slow it down instead of just giving you a prayer. Everyone say the prayer. Please stand. Please be seated. No, we walk through it. We go. Sentence by sentence. We go line by line. Do we? Sometimes. Word by word? Word by word. Letter, letter by, by letter. letter. <laughs> sound by sound. Breath by breath. And we slow it down. We start thinking, what does this really mean? There's a lot of the Bible. It's so hard to read all of it. And even it more than read. It's harder than reading the whole Bible is understanding each part of the Bible yeah. or what it means to you. Uh, we, we talked about Bible Unboxed before. It's, um, it's another YouTube channel. Yes. A friend of ours. Shout out. Shout out Bible Unboxed. And um, uh, he has a recent video, which is fun, where he takes something like we t- out of context, mm. straight out of context. If you were to only read this little tiny part, how far off the mark you'd be. Oh, yeah. that's really, that's, I like that a lot. Yeah. It does the opposite of just explaining what each thing, oh, no, this doesn't mean this, this doesn't mean this. It just goes to show yeah. how much you can take something out of context. Right. Straight out of context. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so today we are going to be reading 1 Timothy. Okay. Now, if you guys don't know what 1 Timothy w- is, Timothy was someone who was spreading the word of God with Paul, Pauly boy, St. Paul, once was Saul, now is Paul. And he was, so he was just, these are his letters to him. Okay. F- to pass on the word. Wonderful that they survived. They didn't. They both died. Oh, the letters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna be reading one Timothy. This is gonna here's be a- Timothy. Come on out. <laughs> it's arrived. <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? Um, so this is a little long one. What we are going and to- we saved paper today. We say save- Spencer we're- will be happy. We're going green. <laughs> we're going paperless. Um, so which one we're gonna be reading is we're going to be reading uh one Timothy five to one Timothy seven, but I'm going to read one Timothy three to seven. Okay. As a whole, and then we're gonna, but we're just gonna be looking at the end part. Okay. So to just give a little background, this is talking about um, false teachers. So now, not only are they going out and spreading the word of God, they're they're also saying beware of what we always say is people who are claiming to be um, preaching the word, but they're preaching some of their selfish tendencies, mm. if you will. So um, one to three is just setting it up paul talking to timothy but starting at timothy 1 3 as i ur- or sorry timothy charged the f- uh, to oppose false teachers as i urged you when i went to macedonia stay there in ephesus so that you may command certain people not to teach false doctrines any longer or to devote themselves to myths and endless genealogies such things promote controversial speculations rather than advancing god's work with which is by faith and so this is starts one five and this is what we're going to be walking through the goal of this command is love which comes from a pure heart and a good conscience and sincere faith some have departed from these things and have turned to meaningless talk they want to be teachers of the law but they do not want to know what they are talking about or what they so confidently affirm okay so we always yeah we always talk about false teachers not not false teachers misguided teachers of who claim to be talking of or you assume that their motivation is is um for sh- purely for spreading the word of god yes. but they have a more personally motivated yes. reason mm-hmm. now starting with one five what i wanted to talk about which we always talk about we're obsessed with talking about is that god is love and when when i read the whole bible i like always a little humble brag with that when i read the whole bible ding. <laughs> um what I got from the whole thing, like talk about walk through Thursday where you're looking, you're microscoping, you zoom out and you're like, okay, I read the whole Bible. What is the biggest, like a rainbow, Okay. the overarching theme? Yeah. Whole thing's about love. Yeah. From from start to finish. Okay. Once you melt away everything. Right. You put it into a soup pot, every single word, you mix it around, throw some potatoes and carrots in there. What kind of soup do you have? You have love soup. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, starting with one five, it's the goal of this command is love which comes from a pure heart and 
good conscience and sincere faith. So it's he's sort of summarizing what the what the true teaching is. Like he, he's saying it right there. He's like, because before that is, um, we're like no longer teach false doctrines, devote themselves to myths, endless genealogies, all this, mm. all this hoopla, if you will, um, rather than advancing God's work, which is by faith. So yeah, it's just saying, <clears throat> what should they be teaching? They should be teaching love. Okay. That's and and as soon as you're not teaching love, you're not teaching about God. Right. And it's um the obsession over small earthly things, which I find so many churches get caught up in. Yes. Which brings me to my next point, which is some have departed from these things and have turned to meaningless talk. So that's what what's what's meaningless talk? Because I feel like we see that a talking lot. Talking for the sake of talking. Meaningless. Talking for this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But I'm saying in a in a biblical false teaching way. Meaningless talk? Yeah. I don't know. What I take it as is, like we we talked about yesterday in the rowing podcast, if you have two rowers rowing two different ways when God's the coxswain, okay. you're not going to go anywhere. Right. When we're all supposed to be Christians. Yes. And the meaningless talk is, I think, all of these earthy arguments of, this is right. No, this is right. Oh, the right. human r- laws or rules that we talked about human, so many times. The human laws. Okay. And, and it, what it's saying is these these people who are preaching yes. faith. Yes. And instead of talking about God's love. Oh, I see. That's different than what I said. Yeah. Because I said talking for the sake of talking. Yeah. That's not it. Meaningless talk is you would think if you're in a certain mind frame that it, that it was meaningful. Yeah. You know, don't eat pork. Yes. But really, when the body's dead and the pork has disappeared... Yeah, was that meaningful? Was that are you really promoting God's message? Because you know, back in the back in the day, with the like the Pharisees and stuff, all they would do is and Jesus had a problem with this as well. They would just sit and argue about this over means and this. Over. No, this means what this. What does it no, mean? This means exactly this. right. And he's saying like they're become obsessed with this meaningless talk and have lost the true message. Like okay. I think all Christians should be able to stand hand in hand and say, "What what are we really doing here?" We are promoting the message of God's love. Yes. And instead, we're saying, oh, well, you're supposed to dress like this. And that person's like, you're supposed to have this many well, no, children. This. Well, you're yeah. not allowed to say this. Did you capitalize the G in God? Right. And how, like, you're spending all that That's faith, really, yeah. faith-filled time with Something to think meaningless about. talk mm-hmm. instead of all sitting in one big Christian circle saying, it's all about love. Yeah. Let's keep, let's promote this. Yeah. Like, let's kumbaya and spin in circles. Right. Okay. So that's really important. Um, distinction to make because meaningless talk if you're not talking about in a biblical sense there's not talking about letters to two um timothy evangelists yeah um it would be like oh like you like pineapple on your pizza Uh, yeah you know that's sort of like frivolous talk or just you know like everyday common talk but meaningless meaning that you are trying to make it meaningful yeah it's lacking like true meaning and when the meaning is referring to God's word. Gotcha. And it's like, you are, because so many people, we, they obsess over yes. these things in Christianity. Right. And it, it drives them mad. They're on the computer all day. Like, no, no, blah, 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 blah. Right. It's like, it's all meaning. Like all these earthly things that are going to be no more Mm-mm. have nothing to do with what we're here to, to learn and okay. follow God, which is love, mm-hmm. which he says it right there is, is the goal of this command is love. So anything that's just not, important not about this this god's love right is meaningless right and to argue over it and to waste time which is meant to be spiritual time because that's the thing it's not random time the time you're having these conversations you're not having it like it's not you're at a starbucks with some random guy and you start arguing over religious things it's in religious circles right so you can literally be spending that time promoting god's love right in your religious the, the time of the day right you spend to think about religion and and You're using it on this meaningless especially talk. these people who were trying to <clears throat> gather more and more and more um followers yeah uh you would be discouraging people by confusing them and inundating them yeah. and you know um yeah drowning them in you know the fabric and the food and the time of day and the the candle yeah. and they're you know it's like yeah it's talking to the teachers i was talking to the ministers and the mm-hmm. priests and all that so it's these when you bring people in for a sermon and they're all listening they're all waiting to hear god's message and you have the opportunity this is what makes them false teachers you have the opportunity to show to express god's love and and, and your your goal on earth 
to be following that love. And instead you're saying, listen to me, my congregation. These people go to hell. Right. If you show off your ankles, you are a heathen. Right. And so you go on and on. It's like you're n- not once have you promoted what God is right. about. Right. The command yeah, is Yeah, you know, this called thing called elevator pitch. Yeah. If you're trying to trying to sell something to someone or get something, an idea across, it has to be as quick as it would take to talk to that person to the next floor because yeah. the person's getting off. You don't have much time. So, you know, it's kind of like that. Like if you, if, if say you were doing that to someone and it's like, well, what's this spirituality about love? Yeah. Not what's the spirituality about morality and, yeah. you know, um, sacrifice and penance and, you know. Yes. Okay. So then just to finish it up um, for one seven is, they want to be teachers of the law, but they do not know what they are talking about or what they so confidently affirm. And so I think that last sentence of what they so confidently affirm is going back to that meaningless talk. Yes. And it's it's this idea that we always say, which is stop speaking for God. Stop stop like saying things as fact when, it, when it's not. There's one fact, and that's God is love. You say it over and over. And so then these earthly laws of I will tell you what's going to happen to you after you die if you do said thing. It's there. It's, it's this conf- like we always say. It's like we take the Bible and, and we say what it means to us and, what, and when, what we take it as, and we're confident in our relationship with God. But there's a lot of people who are preaching, and it's what you would call the false teachers, if you will, mm-hmm. of I know better than you. I know what's going to send you mm-hmm. to hell. I know what's going to get you into heaven. And instead of preaching, following Jesus and just being about love and living the life, your personal relationship to the greatest ability that you you believe it is. Right. And so I think that's like this sort of sums up. We always say, oh, beware of your ministers. But we say, oh, but trust them. I think this is sort of what sums it up right in the Bible is when you go to church, are you seeing the command or seeing the goal of the command is love if you are put a smile on your face you're in the right place but if you start another shirt put a smile on your face you're in the right place (laughs) (laughs) um yeah but if if you are noticing that you are talking more about um condemnation and hatred yeah rather than love then Mm -hmm. are you talking about god at all that's my can you read me that last line again because i was thinking of something and you'll have to re Fresh my memory. They want to be teachers of the law, but they do not know what they are talking about or what they so confidently affirm. Okay. So funny enough, this puts me in the, um, it, this puts me in mind of the book of Job. Oh, does it now? <laughs> it puts me in mind of the book of Job. Yeah. Okay. Because in the book of Job, think of the two friends. Okay. They confidently were telling Job what they knew about God and they were and why he got in the position and why he got in that position and why he was wrong for complaining yeah and and they went on and on and 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 um if you read it you really can see their point of view you're like because imagine if you didn't see god's side before that right imagine if you're real time with job and and they're talking right and so it seems like they know what they're talking about because they're quoting scripture They're, they're they know the rules they know you know they're very all of them were, including Job. Um, they were all very obedient. Now, at the end of um, the book of Job, God says, <clears throat> you guys, you two friends, you don't know what you're talking about. You were wrong. And he gives Job more understanding, more because Job was very confused why God wouldn't just let him die. And like, yeah. you know, he never turned on God, but he did, he did plead to be let go. Yeah. God granted him, and that's what you pray for. You pray for more, um, the ability to see and understand more because you can't learn it in school. You can't learn it from someone telling you. It, it comes from God to you. and, and he, From God's lips to your ears. Yeah. And so he, he did get to have that um, insight. So it's very interesting because, and you know, in, it's really interesting. I'm glad we did this verse today because- I'm I'm obsessed with the book of Job, as you know, <laughs> but even though I'm obsessed with it, I do still get what is going on in this story yeah. because Job, who's such a good um, child of God, is so mad at God mm-hmm. 
And it's like, why couldn't he understand? But that's besides the point. But with what you're saying now, and when God told the two friends, you um, you were wrong. Mm-hmm. That is it because they never said to him, God is love. You are loved. Even though you're suffering, yeah. you're still loved. Mm-hmm. The whole thing is love. You know, they, they were very specific on, you know, this is what happens. This is a punishment. You know how God, you know. Yes. Um, so that's really great. I love it. It's good to hear. I like it too. I love it. And they were well-intentioned. So not all false prophets or whatever are are out to deceive you. Yeah. These friends were good intentioned. They yeah. thought they knew what they were talking about. Exactly. So it was up to Job to, because Job kept telling them, I yeah. I respectfully, reg- you know, yeah. re- <laughs> I'm not going to take what you're saying. And he was correct. Yeah. So, I mean, once again, we always talk about sort of beware of who, where you're getting your message from. Yes. More than where you get your message from, what the message is that you're getting. Right. And But this is a great little cheat sheet. It's a cheat sheet. <laughs> hey, the bo- whole Bible is a cheat sheet. So, you yeah. know, it, t- it tells you everywhere. And, but all in all, this is like, instead of just being like, is my is my preacher a false to the false it's false teacher and it all come <laughs> i feel like we beat ahead of, uh, we beat ahead doors with this one um but it doesn't have to be a teacher it could be your it could be your friend it could, it could be, be your friend. It could parent be anyone. and the the easiest cheat sheet is is what they're saying based around love right if it's not and that's how it is with a lot of things in science and math and any kind of equation or, um, you know, when you get a job and they'll say like, if anything, say you're in a warehouse and they'll say, if the box doesn't have a red sticker on it, that is not for us. Do you know what I mean? Like, so throw that in that bin. Yeah. Like this is because that is so easy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, if, it's, if you don't see that it's about love, you don't have to go further. It's not, it's not fit. That doesn't fit. That's not for our warehouse. It's not for our warehouse. You know, so it, I find it really, um, when we start to talk about Bible verses, when we start to read a big chapter, when we start to say, okay, everybody sit down and, you know, take out your books, uh, people get nervous. Yeah. But this is so easy. So easy. The easy button. <laughs> <laughs> Not unlike, unlike this. <laughs> so easy. It's like if this whole entire thing was red. Yeah. <laughs> it's so easy. You I'm did done. it. You're done. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, all in all, that is Timothy 1. Um, Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, Timothy. I don't know how much time we have. Maybe I should, should I give a little prelude to an episode for the future? Yeah. All right, guys. Time to get real. Time to get um, controversial. No, no, it's not controversial. So some of you guys might be well-read in the Bible, and you might say, Spencer, talk about the next verse. Talk about the controversial stuff oh. old Pauly boy said. And so this is the continuation. Um, He starts to say... Who is unintentioned? Who is going against God? So we know that the law is good if one uses it properly. We also know that the law, law is not made for the righteous, but for the lawbreakers and rebels, the ungodly and sinful, the unholy and irreligious, for those who kill their fathers or mothers, for murderers, for the sexually immoral, for those practicing homosexuality. We'll come back to that. For slave traders and, traders and liars and perjurers. And whatever else is contrary to the sound doctrine. And so you guys might be saying, Crow and Crow, you're against homosexuality. Seems like it. No, we're not. We're pro love. We're going this is a future podcast because there's so much to talk about of homosexuality in the Bible. But I've read an entire thing about everywhere it talks about homosexual in the so homosexuality in the Bible, it's not what you think. It's not our definition. It's not our definition. It's not a a same-sex couple who have love. What it was saying is, is it was mistran not mistranslated, but translated a little differently where at the time, if you look at old Greek and ancient times, there was a big problem where you would have older men, especially of high power, mm-hmm. who would take advantage of boys. Okay. And, and, and it, minors. Have, of minors. And even uh, like this article is way smarter than I am of talking about like the difference of like when in Leviticus when it's like uh, no male shall sleep with a man. It's like the reason they're two different words is because like male was represented as like a okay. y- younger right. boy, yeah. man, and it happened frequently enough to have nothing to do with a loving 
like when when you see a same sex couple at, uh, on the altar today, is there love there? I would say, is there what's the what's the word when you don't cheat? Fidelity. Faithful is there faithfulness? faithfulness is there yeah. unconditional love? Mm-hmm. And we we say on this podcast all the time, wherever there's love, there's God. Right. And if we if you go back to looking at what some of the things it's saying uh, for this sinful this love, not loving that for those who kill their fathers or mother mutter, m- mutters, <laughs> that's no love there. Right. For murderers, no love. For the sexually immoral, which is talking about where a loveless, well, loveless relationships. Right. Um. For <laughs> slave traders. That's pre- that's a loveless trade. Liars and perjurers, no love in that. Homosexuality. Now, it doesn't fit the scheme when you're talking about right. the other ones of right. all of those things are you're going against love. But now if you look at it and you start to think, like I said, we'll go further on this, is what they're talking about this relationship or, or this is not a relationship, this taking advantage, this earthly, not good thing of an older person or a younger person or just because at the time, there was no such thing as a, a happy gay couple. It, was, it wasn't allowed. So right. the only time you would see it, what Paul was against, was when you would see these man, men of power. Yeah. It would be too specific. It, it, like, so why didn't, they, why didn't they put in there people who are doing it with the chicken? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Because it would be too specific to say yeah. a man with a man, but it would be more p- widespread is what you're saying, this kind of power play and this... This power play. And so I think as Christians... A perversion, yeah. Like this, so I'm going to end it here because... Um, we're, we're going to have a whole <laughs> podcast on this, but what I find so hypocritical is we are, let's look at the Catholic Church, for example. I'm big pro-Catholic. This is not a knock on them as a whole. This is a knock on the on some little things. For all this time, they've been pushing, we'll not marry a loving gay couple in a church. We mm-hmm. will not allow it. We'll excommunicate you from the church. Mm-hmm. Back in the day, it was a lot worse than that. And so that's always been one of the highest stances. Right hand in hand there has been a problem in the catholic church with men of power taking advantage of little boys right, you're right and how hypocritical if what the bible is saying oh, wow. is this man and boy relationship and that's happening in the church and you're stopping lo- like you're stopping love right. while allowing what the bible is really talking about right and so once again not blind. not the catholic church but hmm? not blind not seeing blind L- literally <laughs> Right, what's right in front literally of literally promoting what God's not saying. The word while, over. Well, what's the biggest? The, that's the biggest problem in the Catholic Church right. is. It for was the, a downfall. For, it was a downfall of the past, of the past, you know, two couple decades. More, yeah. And yet they still stand on this. Well, this is wrong, and meanwhile, this is what's happening. That's a story for another day. Um, yeah, so we walked through, we walked through all of Timothy one, and um, more to come. Walk through Thursday. You know the vibes. We'll be back tomorrow for Fun Friday. Make it a little more fun, a little more light. Well, they got a little smarter today, so you're welcome. You just got smarter. You're welcome. <laughs> Peace. Wear your mask.